Yes, General. Yes? Is something wrong? Very well. Let us see what we can make from the materials at hand. Yes, General. Yes? Is something wrong? Of course. It would be my pl I try to treasure these moments before the next crisis begins. Very well. What is it you wish to know? I imagine in your travels of the galaxy you've seen many people. Faces tend to blur together after a time. Assassin droids. 
I have encountered some, purchased the service of others. Why, I asked them to. To be honest, I believe that was always their intention, but it seems their directive was dormant for some time. If you mean produced, no, I do not. I do know that there are a surprising number scattered throughout the Republic fleet searching for you. What they will do now that you are found is easy to predict. Of course they are. They're droids with very specific protocols that unless changed will dictate their movements. Unless you shut them down at the source, they will be stalking you until you are captured or terminated. Why don't you ask their predecessor? That archaic memory-impaired assassination droid will know more about his subsequent generations than I would. You may speak. A common misconception not supported by facts. Revan did not intend to destroy the Republic. He deliberately left the infrastructure of many planets intact and many military production facilities. I believe that by whatever means he used to build his armada, he recognized that it was somehow a limited source or that he was only willing to use it to a point. My prediction is that whatever production facility was being employed, it carried a price that Revan perceived as detrimental to the goals of the Sith. And that is why Revan left many military production facilities in the Republic intact. That is what occupies my calculations as well. I believe that Revan saw a war on another front that we did not, or saw the value in keeping a strong military force. That is also a mystery to me. I do not have any evidence upon which to build an answer. It is significant that after the defeat of Malak, the forces decreased considerably, and after Revan's departure from known space, production ceased completely. It is my prediction that whatever was producing such forces needed a strong, effective leader to ensure its stability. Without Revan or Malak, there was no such figure left among the Sith. Unlike Revan, Malak demonstrated no concern for the future of the Republic in his attacks. His stratagems were painfully obvious, intending to crush all resistance everywhere. There was little thought beyond the complete destruction of anything that opposed him. He left quite a mess. I'm still trying to assess all the damage. Between the two, I would have preferred Revan rule the galaxy. He had foresight in his conquest, a subtlety that Malak did not possess. Yes? Have you come with questions? Very well. What is it that drives you? Very well. Sit with me. You have brushed the surface thoughts of another. It is a start. Calm yourself. This time, silence your own thoughts. Keep them still. Imagine the waters of the Room of a Thousand Fountains, each stream suddenly falling silent and still. Imagine the ice of Telos, cold and smooth as it gathers upon the plateau. Now, stretch out. Feel the ship around you. Strip away the metal and see the souls and minds of those that fill its corridors with more thoughts and dreams and worries than can fill the space of this ship. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear, for in fear lies death, and... How could the Jedi leave the Republic? Was it because of the Civil War? Is it possible that they... Switch the face of the plus one, minus one card. The totals are nine, ten. Switch the face of the plus two, minus two card. The total is eight, eleven. Switch. Your command echoes still, General, and I obey, as I did at Malakor. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar. Switch the face of the plus one, I minus shall one not card. Fear. The totals are nine, ten. Fear. Switch the face of the plus two, minus two card. Your command echoes still, General, the total is eight, and I obey, switch. as I did at Malakor. Not now. 
focus on my voice. Malakor. Now do you hear me? Truly hear me. You have taken the first steps on a much longer road, Exile. The droids cannot be read in such a way, nor the beast. He has little thoughts to speak of. As for the alien who served with you in the war, its thoughts are more difficult, requiring many translations in meaning. Often it is better to read their impulses and images than their spoken thoughts. That is why he is deaf to you. I have found his impulses are cold, like a dead weight. His thoughts are black. Indeed. It is strange that I did not. Of course there was. It is because Atten was not playing Pazak, yet he counts cards in his head. At times, he will list off engine sequences, memorize the hyperspace routes on the other side of the galaxy, count the ticking in the power couplings, even though they are fixed. At other times, he will imagine certain base lusts, certain indignities. It may be Atten is far cleverer than he feigns to be, or perhaps he is simply a fool. Yes, have you? Very well. Ah, oh, I had wondered if... But your powers are strong indeed. There are places in the galaxy. Strong in the Force. Light, dark. They are born in places teeming with life, and in places that are filled with death. Worlds whose surfaces are graveyards, whose screams echo through the Force. It is possible for war for men to give birth to such places, to leave wounds on the galaxy itself. What you heard was the echo of the past, and it travels still. Of course, that is the nature of echoes. And when there is a wound in the Force, it rarely leaves the life around it untouched. The answer will come to you in time. It must, when there is nothing more that you may learn from me. When the ruins of your past have been cleared away and I am no more, then you shall know what it is. And if you do not, then the galaxy shall die, and all my hopes for you will have been for nothing. Yes, General? Statement. Master, I must say it is a pleasure to be working side by side with you. Statement. Just when I believe my photoreceptors have recorded the last potential aspect of your cruelty to my memory core, you commit a new atrocity that leaves me analyzing its impact for days. You are like a delightful random cruelty generator, Master, poisoning all you touch with your presence. You are a testament to all organic meat bags everywhere. Statement. I have already learned a great deal, Master, and I am anxious to learn more of lying betrayal and new ways to harm innocence. Statement. 
Ah, you wish to conduct an interrogation? Very well, proceed. Statement. Master, I am no behavior droid, but it is obvious to me that you have serious ethical problems that will need to be treated at some point. Very well. Ask your questions. If you feel the need to make it an interrogation, however, do not restrain yourself. I would be saddened if you held back. Query. Indeed, I was unaware that the Nava computer was locked. Statement. Yes, I heard it was voice printed. Most curious. Statement. I suppose so, Master. But I would need to know who voice locked it. And regrettably, I do not have that knowledge. It seems to me that we will have to accept the T3's astrogation abilities for the time being. It is a very loyal and dependable droid for its class. Statement. Ah, more questions. Wonderful. Statement. Ah, yes, them. Very well. What did you wish to know? Answer. Master, I do not know. The location of the factory churning out these copies eludes me. And I do not know where they would have obtained schematics of my design. They are built from my template. Of that I know for certain. Answer. Because of my self-preservation program, my behavior core recognizes these templates as still being me, despite their individuality. I could no more shoot them than I could shoot myself. It is a frustrating situation that has been looping through my behavior core for some time. Statement. Ah, yes. Them. Very well. What did you wish to know? Answer. Master. As part of my original programming, I am able to communicate in over 600 languages. This usually amounted to short verbal warnings when killing non-basic speaking targets, which gave me some small measure of satisfaction. Answer. Yes. I believe my original master needed this functionality in order to recover information from various indigenous tribes across the galaxy, but I know little else than that. Suffice to say that that translation capability allowed these copies of myself to assume the role of protocol and translation droids in much of known space. That is, of course, not their primary function. And while they are attempting to pass themselves off as translation droids, their primary functionality keeps rising to the forefront. Recitation. For example, on Praven Prime, the simple transferring of Elzing syntax for friendship changes its meaning and implies that one's broodmate was actually impregnated by their own host. If that was spoken aloud, then it would explain much. Is that what happened? Confirmation. Oh, truly, you can imagine the results. Statement. This comment, of course, caused a civil war between the Guvandi Collective and Elzing that still persists to the current date. Answer. Yes, Master. Such incidents often spread outwards from their point of origin, much like an echo. Answer. In the case of Praven Prime, the Civil War actually forced the Republic to back out of Guvandi's space and let their world fall from Republic control. As I understand it, that would be best. Keeping such a world would have been a token gesture of control. As an added burden, the resources needed to invest in diplomatic and trade relations would have far outweighed what would have been required. Besides, Master, quite frankly, the Guvandi and Elzing needed a good war. They were races that relied more on words than actions, and a good, brisk killing woke them from their torpid state. Also, the result of the war will be that the drastically reduced Elzing population will eventually need to call upon the Republic for emergency relief.
Answer. The Republic stands to gain. The Republic will be able to supply such emergency relief at a fraction of the cost to the now reduced population. Of course, such aid would only come four or five years after the war was started. One would have to be patient and let death and destruction run its course. Yes, have you come with questions? That crystal is bonded to you. Let me focus on there. Now, is there something else? Something up? Passes the time. It's better than listing off engine sequencers, memorizing hyperspace routes, or counting ticks in the power couplings. Why do I play Pazak? Alright, I'll show you. Good match. Now, what are you thinking about right now? Right. And that's why I play Pazak in my head. Because if you don't, you've left the door open, and anyone could walk right in. Of course you did. You see, Jedi, light or dark, do it, more often than you'd think. But I never heard one say they were sorry before. That's a new house rule. Ah, I play Pazak in my head. But while I'm doing that, it's a lot harder for someone to walk in. No, I can only teach you to play Pazak. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's not something I can teach you. You've come to the wrong guy. 
Good. Now you understand. All right, I'll deal then. If you're ever fighting someone who has the power over your mind, whether light or dark, play Pazak. Start listing hyperspace routes, recite engine sequencers, and when they try to use their powers on you, suddenly it's not as easy as they thought. Because you'll be right here with me, playing Pazak, where they can't reach you. Something up? All right. After Malachor, after the Mandalorian Wars, that's when the Sith teachings started spreading through the ranks. We knew where our loyalties lay. To the Jedi who came to help us, not the ones who sat back on Dantooine and Coruscant, watching us die. So when those same Jedi who watched us die decided to start fighting us during the Jedi Civil War, we fought back. I fought back. I started killing Jedi. A lot of them. People say killing Jedi is hard. It's not. You just have to be smart about it. No blasters, no getting close to them, no attacking them directly when you can gun down their allies instead. There's ways of gassing them, drugging them, making them lose control, torturing them. I was really good at it. What's worse is that killing them wasn't the best thing. Making them fall. Making them see our side of it. That was the best. I taught myself techniques. It's hard for Jedi to sense what you're really thinking if you throw up walls of strong emotions and feelings. Lust, impatience, cowardice. Most Jedi awareness doesn't cruise beyond the surface feelings to see what's deeper. And I was good at that, throwing up walls. And my superiors knew it. Sometimes the Jedi on our side wouldn't even realize I was there. Yeah, I had a talent for it. More like instinct. I wasn't the only one. I know you left at the Mandalorian Wars, so you don't know much about what went on behind the scenes in the Jedi Civil War. But Revan understood one thing. The real battle was going to be fought between the Jedi on both sides. That was the only battle that mattered. Whoever had the most, the strongest Jedi were going to win the Civil War. If Revan couldn't convert Jedi, Revan would kill them. So Revan trained elite Sith units into assassination squads, whose duty was to go out and capture enemy Jedi. I was in one of the special units trained to do this. Revan had plans for all Jedi. I think it was important that the Jedi see his side of things, the Sith teachings. Revan wanted to break them and then have them join him. One day, I decided not to do it anymore, so I left. Ended up on Nar Shadda, became someone else. I didn't think you would, after Malachor, but it was a chance. I guess I was just tired of keeping it in. And I've been with you only a short time. Enough to know that as soon as someone signs on with you, they haven't got long to live. You got history. And anyone who travels with you doesn't. And maybe I want somebody to know who I was in case a story needs to be set straight. Maybe you understand. I think there's been enough lies and truth for today. Let's just leave it for now. Take your time. I have. Something up? All right. No. Yes, is something wrong? Very well. There. That. You have no wounds that I can Yes, but if you ever need some medical items broken down... Very... Not much remains of the Jedi. There are so many histories, relics. It is a private reason. I am an historian and... I have... I came to... I...
Well, the war was costly, and it's shat, but if a threat strikes now. Telos, on the road. That is my... Without supply line. I imagine it. Yes, is something wrong? Very. I imagine in your. Well, this is Onderon. It looks like there's a long line to get into the Isis starport. Something feels wrong here. A great disturbance here in orbit, and again on the planets below. I guess this blockade is a symptom of larger problems on Onderon. Looks like we're about to find out. I'm receiving a message from some Colonel Tobin, patching it through. The Ebon Hawk. I was told to expect your arrival. I don't know your business on Onderon, but it ends here. We've taken some hits. We can try to fight back, or I can outrun them and hide us on the jungle moon nearby. It's your call. You know, just once I wish someone was glad to see us. But no, if it isn't weapons pointed at our heads, it's someone trying to blast us out of the sky. It's taken a little damage, nothing too serious. I'm shutting down all unnecessary systems until we make repairs. It'll keep us from being a target. Looks like one of the moons of Onderon. Not sure which one. It's mostly jungle and mountain. I did pick up the remains of an old outpost near here. Maybe that's why there's all these clearings around. Maybe they were once settlements. There were no settlements here. Those clearings were most likely once craters or crash sites. Crash sites? This is Duxon, where the Mandalorians began their crusade against the Republic. The remains of whatever outposts you detected here are military ones. We should be careful. This is where the Mandalorian War started? This doesn't look like much of a battlefield. Much is buried here. And there is much that should remain buried. It's taken a little damage, nothing too serious. I'm shutting down all unnecessary systems until we make repair. Well, the space ba Well, I don't like it. Onderon is about as far from the core as you can get and still be in the Republic. But even out here, the locals have heard of us. We're lucky I was able to find this place to land. Looks like something has cleared away the jungle in a few spots around here. Until the ship is repaired, we're not going anywhere. Unless you can find another route to Onderon, we should sit tight. There may be a means to get to Onderon by another route. The Force has guided us here for a reason. 
We should explore our surroundings. There is... something here. Something? Oh, there's something here, all right. Predators. Not small flit darters, but big, mean, nasty predators. Nevertheless, we should explore our surroundings. And that nearby outpost would be as good a place as any to begin. Well, if you go, be careful. No telling what other ships were forced down in the battle. I have a feeling the ship will not be repaired until our business here is concluded. Do I make myself clear? Yeah, I understand. What's so important about this place? This is where the Mandalorian Wars began. She fought here once, and there are things here she must see. She fought here? Why didn't she say anything? Do you speak of all your battles? Or are there some you wish to forget?
That ship may have landed nearby, though. Or it may be on the other side of the moon. So you might want to prepare for another friendly Onderon welcome. Yes, General.
Yes? Is something wrong? You have no wounds that I can see. Very well. Yes, but if you ever need some medical light... Very well.
Like you, I was looking for some trace of the Jedi. I had heard mention that one of the Jedi Masters had gone there, but I found no trace of them. The other reason was the ruins of the Jedi Enclave, and once I arrived, I felt it was necessary to stay, to protect what was left. Much had been taken from the Enclave, both by raiders and others. I wished to preserve what I could. Many artifacts were taken from the Enclave, but these thefts, they had to have been done by someone who knew the Enclave well. I suspect the Jedi themselves took the holocrons and records, but I do not know why. Someone has been taking holocrons from sites across the galaxy. It is almost as if someone does not want their knowledge used to find the Jedi. The situation on Dantooine is echoed in other places in the galaxy. Raiders, smugglers, all seek to plunder what remains of the Jedi, and even the Sith. More so than the Jedi themselves, I fear the loss of their history. Much has been forgotten in recent wars, and I fear that greater troubles shall stem from that loss of knowledge in the future. The destruction of the Academy on Osus near the Kron Drift in the Sith War. The teachings of Master Arka. The adventures of Jolie Bindo on the Rimward missions. All of these things are in danger of being lost forever. Very well. No. It is something of a mystery why they would exile themselves as they have. It is not the way of the Jedi to vanish in such a way. Especially when the Republic is in need of them. I fear that there is something else at work. Something that we cannot see. Then again, perhaps the Jedi are hiding simply because so many people hate them these days. It is difficult sometimes for the Jedi to see such things, since much of it is rooted in human nature, and the Jedi are often removed from events of daily life, insulated. But the reason the Jedi Civil War was named such was because few in the galaxy can recognize the difference between the Sith and the Jedi. To them, they are both Jedi, with different philosophies. Not always. Jedi often fall. They cause much harm on Onderon, for example, in the name of peace and protection. Uleg Kaldroma and Exar Kun, the two Dark Lords during the Sith War many decades ago, were once Jedi Knights, as were Revan and Malak. It is perhaps more amazing that some still trust Jedi after many have fallen and endangered the galaxy. It is also proof that a single Force wielder can change the face of the galaxy. And that is a frightening thing indeed. Hate? No. They do not hate them. They only raise questions without answers. Jedi are not supposed to be like the rest of us. They are supposed to see a higher purpose in all things. And they are supposed to train the students responsibly and well, so mistakes of the past are not repeated. Yet all I saw was ignorance and arrogance, and what those seeds created in the Republic. It is difficult to follow the Jedi Code when so few others have. But you know this. The problems with the Jedi are my own. I do not wish to burden you with my troubles. Very well. A Force Bond? What do you mean? I thought I had heard mention of such connections in some of the holocrons, but I do not possess them. They are part of the holocrons that were taken from the Enclave. I do not know. I do not know who has taken them. If we were to find them, perhaps I could help you find the answers you need. I know some of what you speak. It is said that when a Jedi and Padawan establish a close connection, that they can feel each other across distances and coordinate their movements in battle. The intensity of the connection varies. That bonding is said to also be something that manifests itself in such techniques as Bastila's battle meditation, the ability to touch the minds of others, to demoralize or inspire them. It is also said that moments of death or near death may also cause such bonds. The stronger one is in the Force, 
the stronger the connection. Thoughts. Images, perhaps, but not actual communication and words. A bond often causes a sensation to be passed along it, such as extreme fear. Still, I have seen Jedi who have the ability to communicate with aliens and beasts. It is a rare thing. Perhaps telepathy is one such talent. I've never heard of a bond being lethal. I suppose such a thing is possible. I had not truly believed Bastille as battle meditation until I had seen it in action. I try to treasure these moments before the next crisis begins. Very well. I imagine it. My life or yours. I am able to serve. If we enter... I... I have not heard that question in some time. I serve my... My master was aware of a disturbance. There is little my... You cannot... Even... If I bring... It would be as if one... You will meet my master. And when you stand before... I... My people want that sight me... My sight has been... Damn... My master, he has crippled me. It is not something I can exp- You let the ship escape? I will deal with your failure later, Captain. But for now, find that ship. Our ally has indicated that the Jedi hasn't left the system yet. Send a detachment to Duxon. If you find anything, alert me immediately. Now get out of my sight.
that we this You are so 